Anyone who knows me knows that I can get a little carried away when it comes to the Oscars. Yeah! Oh my God, no! And this year is no exception. So, let's dive right into the 88th Academy Awards, who should win what will win. Full Oscar coverage begins right now. Best Actor, the nominees are Brian Cranston as a blacklisted screenwriter in Trumbo, Matt Damon as a stranded astronaut in The Martian, Leonardo DiCaprio as a vengeful frontiersman in The Revenant, Michael Fassbender as the Apple founder in Steve Jobs, and Eddie Redmayne as a trans woman in The Danish Girl. Leonardo DiCaprio, of course, will win an Oscar at long last for The Revenant. I'll be honest, though, I wasn't blown away by his performance, nor did I feel a lot of emotional investment towards his character. If the Academy cared about doing its job correctly, they should have awarded him back in 2004 for playing the eccentric Howard Hughes in The Aviator. I think the Academy knows this, along with all the other times they purposefully snubbed him, which is why awarding him now for his one-note performance in The Revenant feels more like obligation fulfillment. That is a very shameful tactic on the Academy's part. They should know it always goes to the performance, not the career. As for who should win, Damon and Fassbender were good, but nothing really stand out. The movies themselves weren't anything that great. Guys, I wish I could be more of a team player, but I don't really care who wins this category. Best Supporting Actress. The nominees include Jennifer Jason Lee as a foul-mouthed fugitive in chains in The Hateful Eight, Rooney Mara as the younger half of a lesbian couple in Carol, Rachel McAdams as a determined journalist in Spotlight, Alicia Vikander as the trans woman's supportive wife in The Danish Girl, and Kate Winslet as Apple's marketing was in Steve Jobs. I do think Alicia Vikander will win for The Danish Girl, although I haven't seen the movie, it does look like typical Oscar bait. It even waited to come out until late December, isn't that convenient, just in time for the Academy. Kate Winslet was nothing special in Steve Jobs, and Jennifer Jason Lee wasn't particularly memorable as Hateful Eight's female baddie. This is a pretty weak category, folks, but if I had to pick a personal favorite, I would go with Spotlight's Rachel McAdams. Not a role with a lot of chewy substance, but she's very solid and professional in it. She's also part of a great movie in general. Best Supporting Actor. The nominees include... Christian Bale as an eccentric money manager in The Big Short, Tom Hardy as a full-bearded psychopath in The Revenant, Mark Ruffalo as an investigative reporter in Spotlight, Mark Rylance as a Russian spy in Bridge of Spies, and Sylvester Stallone as mentor Rocky Balboa in Creed. Stallone will win this category, although I haven't seen the movie, I have heard he's great in it. I have seen all the other nominees, though. Mark Rylance did not have a tremendous amount of screen time in Bridge of Spies, but the scenes he was in were very effective. No way did Tom Hardy deserve a nomination for The Revenant. He was such a cartoonish and clumsy bad guy, his motives were never quite clear. Add to the fact I couldn't even understand him half the time. My two favorites in this category are Christian Bale and Mark Ruffalo. I'd be happy to see either of them win it, but if I had to pick one, I would go with Ruffalo for Spotlight. I'm actually both delighted and shocked Mark Ruffalo was even considered, since it's not a role with a lot of flash and sizzle that the Academy usually tends to go for, and Mark Ruffalo's performance is so effective in Spotlight for that very reason. He does not overplay his role. There is a genuine thrill in watching Ruffalo's body language and facial tics express themselves when he discovers new pieces of evidence and begins to put more pieces of the case he's investigating together. Meanwhile, we as an audience get the pleasure of seeing just how a journalist conducts a newspaper investigation. I thought there was so much at work with this performance, I'm glad the Academy picked up on it, subtlety and all. But Sylvester Stallone will win for Creed. Best Actress. The nominees include... Kate Blanchett as a 50s lesbian housewife in Carol, Brie Larson as a protective mother in Room, Jennifer Lawrence was very good as the rags to riches miracle mop inventor Joy, although the movie itself was wildly uneven, Charlotte Rampling as a married woman carrying secrets in 45 years, and Sir Ronan taking a stroll with my cousin Emery Cohen there as a young Irish immigrant in Brooklyn. Another sure thing of the night is 26-year-old Brie Larson winning for her haunting and powerful performance in Room. But does the Academy have this sick rule that they must only pick women who suffer horribly in this category? Hollywood apparently only likes to see their women beaten, brutalized, psychologically tortured, and dying of illnesses. If the Academy would let their obsession with pain not cloud their judgment, they would know that the true winner in this category should be Saoirse Ronan for her stunning work in Brooklyn. To me, Saoirse Ronan had a much more challenging role to pull off. Brie Larson had to act emotionally exhaustive most of the time, 
Whereas Ronan had to make us, as an audience, identify with her struggle as an Irish immigrant adjusting to the American mixed culture of New York in the 1950s. That is a much more difficult task to pull off, and she accomplishes it with a lot of charm and likability. She's not allowed to be as overt in her facial expressions as Brie Larson was. But the Academy only sees pain and judges this category based on the merits of who suffered the most. Maybe if Sir Ronan was strangled, mugged, and pissed on, she would have a fighting chance. Best Director. The nominees include Adam McKay for The Big Short, George Miller for Mad Max Fury Road, Alejandro G. Inyaritu for The Revenant, Lenny Abrahamson for Room, and Tom McCarthy for Spotlight. I know a lot of people are saying Senor Inyaritu will win for The Revenant, but I have the sneaking suspicion that George Miller will prevail as the surprise upset. It will also mark the first time an action director has won this award since William Friedkin bagged it in 1971 for The French Connection 45 years ago. Kind of amazing when you think about it that Miller has seen himself all the way to the finish line as the category frontrunner when he directed a silly Mad Max movie that came out in May. Too bad I just wasn't a bigger fan of the movie. I was very pleased to see Lenny Abrahamson nominated for Room, quick shout out to him. But I would vote for Tom McCarthy, who showed amazing directorial restraint with the excellent spotlight. Most directors might have felt a tendency to get all preachy and melodramatic with the film's subject matter, but McCarthy trusted the strength of his powerful story and the naturalness of his screenplay and actors that the film worked as a riveting docudrama instead of a Hollywood fluff piece. And all credit goes to Mr. McCarthy, but the insane Miller will win for the equally insane Mad Max. And finally, Best Picture. The eight nominees for Best Picture, all of which I have seen, are Adam McKay's financial dramedy The Big Short, Steven Spielberg's Cold War thriller Bridge of Spies, John Crowley's immigrant drama Brooklyn, George Miller's action desert chaser Mad Max Fury Road, Ridley Scott's space survival thriller The Martian, Alejandro G. and Yari 2's brutal drama The Revenant, Lenny Abrahamson's claustrophobic and haunting room, and Tom McCarthy's newsroom insider drama Spotlight. Let me give some quick shout-outs. Bridge of Spies was a riveting and suspenseful thriller, the best work both Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks have done in years. Room was a grim and harrowing drama featuring strong, visceral performances. Brooklyn was a wonderful coming-of-age drama with a lot of heart. I would be okay with any of those three fine films winning the top prize, but there is still one film above all the rest that I hope still has the momentum to win and that is Tom McCarthy's riveting and gripping newsroom drama Spotlight, a movie I have watched three times already. It is a movie that works on two levels. It works as a fascinating detective story about reporters slowly dissecting a corrupt system that threatens to undo the integrity of the city of Boston, and it works as a stirring procedural that picks up on the fascinating minutia of a newsroom environment. I especially loved those scenes. The late film critic Roger Ebert once said, actual work is more interesting than most plots. The same can be said of Spotlight. As for who will win, this has actually been a very unpredictable award season. Let's review. You have Spotlight winning the Screen Actors Guild, you have The Revenant winning the Golden Globe and the Directors Guild, and you have The Big Short winning the Producers Guild Award. For the past eight years, every film that has won the Producers Guild Award has also gone on to win the Oscar. For that reason alone, I am predicting that The Big Short will win the Academy Award for Best Picture. The Academy will make a compelling argument that the movie is an accurate reflection of today's America, with issues that still continue to affect millions of Americans. It educates while it entertains. Now, I thought The Big Short was good, not great, and not without its flaws. I felt that the tone and narrative were inconsistent at times. It would simultaneously hit you over the head with a lot of overwhelming financial jargon, most of which I still cannot comprehend, while also trying to find a lot of raunchy humor within its educative subtext. In other words, it was trying to be Wall Street and The Wolf of Wall Street at the same time, and that made for a very uneven, albeit entertaining and informative film, but one that I have no urge to watch again anytime soon. As for the other nominees, I absolutely applaud the technical ambition of The Revenant. The cinematography is outstanding, the atmosphere of the film seethes with brutal intensity, but I did not find myself caring that deeply on a story level. I thought the characters, for the most part, were all surface and no depth, and by the movie's midsection, the pacing becomes unrelentingly slow before it picks up again with a bit more energy. Therefore, I thought it was just okay. I admired it more than I actually liked it. 
Mad Max Fury Road had a lot of goofy energy, but not a movie I really need to see again. Ridley Scott's The Martian, an average movie borrowed with parts from a lot of other movies. The Big Short will win. I still wear the shirt that says Team Spotlight. That's my take on the 88th Academy Awards. I'm Bryce Falcon. I want to thank you for watching. If you have any comments with your predictions and your preferences, please leave them below, and I will see you at the Oscars.